Tonight, got a secret starring Gary Moore. Thank you, had a good time. Now, are you all ready to play the game as of tonight, uh, panel? Oh, yeah. Well, we have a switch. Our first contestant is not backstage, as he usually is. Uh, he is currently wandering around in our studio audience. As a matter of fact, he's been out there for almost a half an hour now, ever since our audience came into the theater. Now, we're going to call him, panel, we're going to call him Mr. X. And since he is otherwise occupied at the moment, I will show his secret to the audience. You will address your questions to me. I will answer for him because he is busy. May we see Mr. X's secret, please? Panel, Mr. X's secret concerns something he is doing, and Betsy Palmer, we will start with you. Well, Mr. X, I can see you're doing it out. You're asking questions, are you? Yes. Uh, these questions that you are asking, Mr. X, do they have something to do with uh, those of us on the panel? No, the questions Mr. X is, uh, is asking has nothing to do with the panel. Should we find out what, those quest what the question is that he is asking? It might be helpful, Betsy. Is, is he taking a survey of some sort? Uh, inasmuch as a survey is generally regarded as something which will bring up a final statistic on a given question, the answer is no. 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 Um, uh, this, uh, there's something, well, this is very confusing. I want to keep looking at him out there. There's something that you're doing, does it have, will it affect women more than it will men? No. No. <laughs> There's no discrimination between the sexes here. There's $20 down, $60 to go, and we go to Bill Cullen, please. Well, from the response he's getting, I would gather he's trying to borrow money. <laughs> Mr. X keeps looking at people, and they keep saying no. Uh, this thing that Mr. X is doing in the theater, he isn't by any chance an assassin, is he? Uh, not that we know of. If, it, if he is, it's immaterial. He is looking for a particular type of person, is he? Nope. A particular person? Nope. He's just out there bothering those people, not letting them watch a show. <laughs> would we know Mr. X by name? Oh, sure we would, or he wouldn't be Mr. X. It's quite conceivable. Is his name... All right, $40 you know. down and $40 to go. And we go to Betty White, please. This is no fun at all at home. You say on the screen what his secret is. <laughs> uh, is, is he trying to sell something? Mm. No. Is he trying to borrow something? Uh, aside from money? No, he's trying, not trying to borrow anything. Not trying to borrow... Is he looking for something, if not some person? Is he looking for something? Uh, no. No, no uh, not an object. Oh. Is there a, another person involved in this secret in any way? There are many other people involved in this secret. The audience, obviously. The audience, obviously, yes. Uh, yeah, All right, baby, that's $60 uh, down, $20 to go, and we go to Henry Morgan. I'm more interested in what do those kids wave at when they wave at, at, at a camera? <laughs> what does that mean? Here I am? What is the thinking behind that? You look like a bunch of nuts. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you ever watch it at home, you think the other people look nutty. You look... I, well. I, I think that there is, no, there is no greater rapture than the face of a person who discovers himself on television for the first time. I but don't know why it is. Do? What does he make with this? Well, it's so you can tell who you are when you're waving. You're losing your chance, you know. <laughs> I don't even understand. Now, this other... <laughs> Thanks to this diversion, we have gone down $80 to nothing. Final Mr. X's secret is that he has been memorizing the names and the faces oh, no. of the people in our studio audience, about 500 people all told. Mr. X's real name is Harry Lorraine, and he is the author of a new book, which I read and found fascinating, named, uh, um, uh, called, uh... <laughs> How to Develop a Superpower Memory, which you may have seen advertised. Harry, would you come up on stage, please, my friends? This is Harry Lorraine. Remarkable. 
Now, for our cameras, I would like to have all of you in the studio audience who gave your names to Mr. Lorraine, please raise your hand, please. No. Well, there you go. We didn't quite cover the back of the balcony, but we got about a good 500 people in. All right. Now, I am going to just pick a group at random. I'll take the right side of the balcony over here. Now, well, the first, all the people on that side of the front section of the balcony, please stand up. Now, I'm going to ask Mr. Lorraine to start at the right end, read from right to left. The people there, as your name is called, please sit down. All right, you want me to start from this end, Gary? Oh, yeah, got it? Yes. All right, that's Mr. Saar, Mr. Stinson, Miss Graff, Mrs. Graff, Miss Finkelstein. Uh, if I can see correctly, I believe that's the Harpin family. Mr. and Mrs. Harpin, there was Dorothy Harpin and Esther Harpin, Mrs. Pollock, and way in the corner, it's a little dark there, but I believe that's Mrs. Stern. Uh, let me start from this end again. I'll go across the next row. All right, row. we'll start up? back in the second row and go across there. Okay, if I can see correctly, I believe that's Mr. Rutherford and uh, Mrs. Anderson is in between the Rutherfords. There's Mrs. Rutherford on the other side of Mrs. Anderson. Mr. and Mrs. Hajini, I hope I pronounced that correctly. This is easy because it's the Watney family. It's Mr. and Mrs. Watney, Mr. Watney, and Mrs. Watney. Uh, thank you. I just, I just wanted to finish that row, Gary, if I may. Uh, it was Miss Perlstein, Miss Rosenberg, Miss Zalas, and Mr. Friedman. All now, right, thanks. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll now go downstairs. You folks, the rest of you folks remaining standing, forgive us. You may be seated. I would uh, like Betsy to prove that there's no... Well, I don't want to prove there's no collusion because you know we don't kid you on this show. Betsy, uh, pick a number between one and five. Three. Three. Will all the people in the third row of the front section down here in the orchestra please stand up? All the people in the third row... Now, if you'll start again, from right to left, Harry, and name these people for us. All right. Uh, this is Mr. and Mrs. Duncan. Mr. and Mrs. About, uh, excuse me just a moment. Will you uh, please be seated as your name is called so we'll know we have the right names. Yes. Uh, it was Mr. and Mrs. Duncan, Mr. and Mrs. Brockett, Mr. and Mrs. Pryor, uh, Mrs. Self, Mrs. Council, Mrs. Costello, I believe. Mrs. Costello, Mrs. Zeisler. I had a little trouble with that before. Mr. and Mrs. Ackerman, and this is a very difficult name to remember. This is Mr. Jones. Right. <laughs> All right. Now, so to prove to you that he doesn't have to memorize them in sequence, seated across, I'm just going to throw some tennis balls out in the audience. I'll, I'll throw one over in this direction, please. Whoever catches it, please rise. Sir, will you stand up? Will you tell us who caught yes, it? Yes, the gentleman who caught that ball was Mr. Theus. Is that right, sir? <laughs> Mr. Theus. How did you remember? Now, let me ask you this. How did you remember that that's Mr. Theus? As a matter of fact, that gentleman helped me himself. The best way to remember it, see, actually, you have to take the name, make it mean something, and then associate it to one outstanding feature on the person's face. I thought of the United States, the U.S., the Theus itself, T-H-E-U-S, and I picked out his character lines from the nose down to the corner of the lip and just saw a map of the United States there. <laughs> oh <my laughs> well, let's see whose map we pick out over on this side, over here. <laughs> Well, we've got a couple of guys. I can't miss over here because that's Mr. Stadler. We've got the whole Stadler family right there. The one that almost caught that ball was Mrs. Applegate. How about that, right? Over them. All right. Now, one back here. Here we go. Uh, I don't think anybody... Well, Mrs. Costello got on a rebound to hear from Mr. J from Mr. Well, let's, let's stay downstairs because we had Mrs. Costello before. The people in the first three rows, keep your hands down. I'll go way back, please, if you will. Somebody in the fourth. Well, hall. it's all right, Miss Dunn. Don't feel bad. I'll call your name anyway. And the uh, gentleman that just caught that ball, sir, unfortunately, I can't see you too well. I think you're Mr. Norton. Am I right? I'm Mr. Norton. Good, because I couldn't see in that area. Well, that's it. That's that proves our point. But you do work by association. Yes. Well, talking about association, perhaps the name Theus didn't give the example. Let's use yourself. Uh, if yeah. I want to remember the name Moore, yeah. to me, Moore means swamp. Well, you know, something like the swamp. Thanks. And the outstanding, the outstanding feature I would pick on you, Gary, would be your hair. That doesn't mean your hair looks like a swamp to me, but it would, it would make me think of Moore, you see, and then I would call you Mr. Moore. Thanks very much. <laughs> a remarkable thing, isn't it? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll give you the money we can get to Now, the lady who, caught, lady who caught the ball the second time, will you stand up, please? The lady who caught the ball, don't, now, uh, yeah, yeah, just stand up, please. The lady who caught the ball the second time. Mrs. Costello. Uh, Costello. Costello. Miss Costello. Yeah, I just wanted to see. Uh, <laughs> I had an idea you might do something. 